Siddhi, please start. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the centenary celebration of Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIST Shippur. I am Siddhi Suman, a third year undergraduate student of this institute and host for this evening. Today, we all are here for the 34th lecture under the centenary lecture series, which is to be delivered by our honorable alumnus, Dr. Shambhunath Nandi, on the topic Underwater Robotics Design and Control Challenges. This session will be chaired by Professor Shubhashish Bhomik, who is Dean of Planning and Development and also Professor in the Department of Aerospace Engineering and Applied Mechanics at IAST Shipkur. I would like to invite Professor Shubhashish Bhomik, sir, for the further continu continuation of the program. Sir. Uh, thank you, Siddhi. And uh, today, uh, we are going to start the centenary lecture series, lecture number 34. And uh, you can understand that the mechanical engineering department of IST Shippur, they uh, so far they have arranged 34 lecture series. And this is not a very uh, easy task to do it. Okay. To arrange 34 speakers in the different field, in the different different uh, disciplines of interest. Okay, it's uh, really it is a difficult task and I congratulate the mechanical, the head of the mechanical engineering department to organize such a programs almost on each and every week. They are organizing this kind of events as the mechanical department is uh, uh, means uh, is observing the centenary year for this particular year, 2022-23. Now, today's uh, talk is on underwater robotics, design and control challenges. And the uh, speaker is known, not other than uh, Dr. Somunath Nandi, a very well-known scientist in the field of robotics and authority in the field of robotics. Just I'm going through a very a short uh, CV of Dr. Nundi. Dr. Nundi is now currently working as CSIR Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute, CMERI Durgapur, as a chief, uh, chief scientist. And uh, he is also the head of the intellectual property management group. Also, at the same time, he is also uh, looking after the Center for Advanced Manufacturing and Metrology at CMRI, Durgapur. Dr. Nundi passed out from this institute, IIST Shippur. Earlier, it was known as Bengal Engineering College. And he passed out in the year of 1994. So, being uh, in mechanical engineering and then master's in the year of 1996 from the same institute, from our institute. And uh, he obtained his PhD in the mechanical engineering from IIT Kharagpur in the year of 2014. And he has worked in the field of robot control using fused sensor data. Dr. Nundi's research interest, it includes many fields. Out of this, underwater robotics is his famous, and I hope that Dr. Nundi also loved this particular field. Along with that, he has the authority in the field of kinematics, dynamics, control, navigations, guidance, and he has more than 25 years of experience in working in the field of robotics. He has handled many projects. Almost uh, he has completed projects worth rupees 45 crores so far in the different domains of robotics as a principal investigator or maybe as a project leader or maybe as a member of the team and currently he is working on two projects in the field of underwater robotics as pi principal investigator and three projects in the other domains of robotics as co-PI or the member of the team. Dr. Nundi has served as a nodal 
officer in several committees of CSIR, CMERI. And what I know that under the CSIR lab, whatever the laboratories are there, he is the man, he basically has the authority of working in the field of robotics. So whenever a problem comes in the field of robotics, generally the CMRI Durgapur take it as a challenge, either in the national level or in the international level. And uh, he has handled a network programs on autonomous underwater robotics as a nodal officer under 12th five years plan. And he has more than 50 publications and eight IPR to his credit. He is a recipient of that fellowship in the year 2002-2003 and the Gandhian Young Technological Innovation Award in the year 2015. He's a member of Robotics Society of India and he served as a PI of the Bureau of Indian Standard. He is also adjunct professor in the, in the School of Mechatronics and Robotics, which is offered by IIST Shippur, and also the professor of ACSIR, that is the academic part of the CSIR laboratory. He has also served as a coordinator ACSIR for three years and as a head robotics and automations group at CMRI for two years. I know, I personally know uh, Dr. Nundi, and uh, he has both inclinations in the theoretical side, that means the mathematical side of problem, uh, problem solving in the field of robotics, as well as uh, he uh, contributes for the real physical systems, physical systems development, testing, implementations, so in each and every field, uh, basically he is the last man to say. So I will not spend much time and I invite uh, Dr. Nundi uh, to deliver his talk. So kindly limit uh, the presentations within one hour and then we will have a question and sessions. Dr. Nundi, please. Yeah, thank you, Professor Bhomik for, uh, you know, your nice introduction and it's my pleasure to be here uh, basically uh, you know to deliver a lecture at the centenary year of our mechanical engineering department so it's always a pleasure to you know uh, get involved in such a program and i really uh, i am grateful to all the esteemed alumni like professor ghosh professor bolik uh, uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Dhankar Bose and who else are present in this uh, lecture session. So probably some of the uh, things they have already uh, know and they have already gone through because uh, uh, Dr. Shomo was also associated in this, uh, you know, uh, in these uh, activities for a long time. And I was also a team member or sometimes project leader in this uh, endeavor. So I am really thankful to the uh, B College uh, uh, IIST Shippur uh, HOD for giving me a chance to, to deliver a lecture in this session. So let me start my slides. Uh, yes, my slides are visible. Yes, slides are this. Uh, you can make it full screen. Yes. yes. So today's topic is underwater robotics, uh, design and control challenges. And I will be mainly focusing on the development that took place at CSIR CMRA Durgapur and also the future trends uh, in the domain of underwater robotics, as well as the challenges involved, particularly in design, control, navigation guidance, and all other aspects. Probably all of you are aware that underwater robotics is a multidisciplinary field and it is still not explored to that extent, uh, to, to the extent that outer space of our art is explored. So uh, probably you may also aware that 
uh, number of persons who has visited the outer space, particularly moon or uh, various, uh, you know, space missions, it is very high compared to the uh, number of person who has visited the inner space, that is the ocean. So the motivation comes from the ocean covers more than 70% of the Earth's surface. It is a treasure house of resource vital to the survival of mankind. It is important for all of us to understand and to utilize it wisely. So the Indian mainland has a long coastline of around 7,000 kilometers. The fact is that scientists know more about the surface of the moon than the depth of the ocean. So the curiosity to see the ocean floor led men to build boats or ships to traverse water, develop sonic technology to explore the underwater domain, build submarines, man submersibles, and develop scuba system and subsequently autonomous vehicles or autonomous underwater vehicles to see the mysteries of the dark depth of the of dark depth for themselves. So we are aware that uh, our human divers are being used in this kind of hazardous environment, which is very risky. And uh, uh, it is very difficult for them to move more than 30 to 40 meter of water depth. And they uh, used to get premature death due to this kind of risky operations. So they have very shorter lifespan. To avoid that kind of human intervention in this hazardous environment, there is a very extreme need to develop underwater vehicles which can which can cooperatively work with these human drivers divers or uh, these vehicles can perform the task which uh, human diver is performing it is also required from countries defense or surveillance point of view to develop autonomous underwater vehicle to protect the sovereignty of our country so there are <coughs> uh, numerous regions to uh, go for uh, development of autonomous underwater vehicle, like uh, to obtain food and mineral reserves, to explore that thing, then discover new lands and pathways, then develop trade between countries, explore bi biodiversity, and as well as for our naval applications in terms of surveillance and uh, to protect our country uh, from, uh, you know, uh, from different other countries like China and uh, other other countries so early beliefs early years the beliefs and facts was that that life could not exist deep in the ocean so at 2000 meter of depth light scatters and fades at 4000 meter around 13000 feet the temperature drops almost to freezing that is zero degree centigrade so at the right side you can see the thermocline so decreasing temperature how the temperature is decreasing from surface to uh, 4,000 to 5,000 up to 7,000 meter of depth. So at 4,000 meter of depth, the temperature is near to 4 degrees centigrade or tends to uh, 0 degree. And pressure also becomes unbearable for humans after 30 to 40 meter of depth. Uh, it increases at one at the rate of 1 bar per 10 meter of water depth. So initially, the belief was that the no light means no plant life which ultimately Im implies no animal life. But that belief has changed due to exploration of deep ocean with various means of underwater vehicles. So if you see the milestone that space come in a space, then we can see these are the uh, you know very relevant facts. On 12th April 1961 abroad, the spacecraft Vostok 1 Soviet cosmonaut Yuri A. Gagarin becomes the first human being to travel into space. Rakesh Sarma of India, a, pi a pilot and cosmonaut, the first Indian citizen in space. Vasco da Gama link Europe and Asia by an ocean route connecting the Atlantic and Indian Ocean. On 23rd January 1960, two explorers, a US Navy Lieutenant Don Walls and Swiss engineer Jacques Picard became the first people to dive 11 kilometer to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. So this is the uh, Challenger deep part of Mariana Trench. So finally, just eight people have reached Challenger deep till now, the deepest point of the ocean. But more than 550 people have visited space, but only one person has done both, that is Kathy Sullivan. And 
with that vehicle in 1960, uh, that is known as Tristi, the Swiss design Italian deep, deep driving research batiscape, which was designed by the Jaguar speaker. Uh, so they have traveled up to a depth of 11 kilometers at that time. So that is a uh, that vehicle is designed by uh, you know uh, Swiss uh, Swiss scientists. So then we see that Al Alvin is the manned submersible. So Alvin helped inspire the development of new generation of deep submergence technology and vehicles. Says Andy Borden, the director of National Deep Submergence Facility at Woodsol. Uh, oceanographic institute and it continues to inspire generation of future scientists engineers and explorers 6005 meter depth rated covering 95 percent 98 percent of the sea floor within reach so this kind of development has helped to reach at least 98 percent of the uh, might be possible to reach 98 percent of the sea floor as uh, 98 percent of the sea covers the depth within 6500 meters so specification of Alvin was like that, length 7.1 meter, beam 2.6 meter, drop 2.3 meter, speed 2 knot, and range 5 knot, depth range, uh, test range is uh, 6,500 kilometers. So if you see the development of stages of ocean vehicles, so initially it was ships, then we can see submarines, then manned submersibles, then remotely operated vehicle, and now the train needs to develop autonomous underwater vehicle in the recent past. The basic difference between a ROV and a AUV is that a remotely operated vehicle, it will be operated from a distance place, but it is connected with a tether. The tether can carry the signal and power both. But in case of AUV, it is a completely autonomous system. The power and intelligence both are embedded with the onboard. So that's why it is not connected with a tether. So there is the challenge lies. The advantage of ROV and AUV, uh, you know, there are a certain advantage of ROV over AUV and certain advantage of AUV over ROV. So that depends on the type of requirements. We need to select what kind of vehicle we should design, or we can have the provision of designing uh, a vehicle which can operate in ROV or AUV mode, which is known as hybrid autonomous underwater vehicle. So if you see the classification of underwater vehicles, the underwater vehicles are all types of underwater robots, which are operated with minimum or without intervention of human operator. So underwater vehicles are classified and manned and unmanned, these two categories. Manned categories are surface vehicles, submarines, and submersibles. And unmanned vehicles are like torpedoes, like DRTO labs, they are uh, involved in this kind of development. Then ROVs, that is remotely operated vehicle, AUVs, that is autonomous underwater vehicle, then gliders, and of course, the present trend also uh, nowadays is to develop biomimetic vehicles, where small underwater vehicle might be developed and number will be more, so which can cover a larger area and uh, which can uh, also deliver the required uh, objective. So classification of ROVs. So ROVs are normally uh, categorized into five classes, pure observation vehicles, then observation vehicles with payloads, work class vehicles, towed vehicles, and specialized vehicles. The advantage of AUV over ROV is that ROV is Whenever we need to deploy a ROV, it needs to have number of subsystems like winch and slippering, then human operator, then operator console, then launch and recovery system, power supply module, all has to be associated with a ROV. But in case of AUV, we, it is a slim system, it, is, it doesn't require any tether, but computational complexity or mathematical involvement in case of AUV is further uh, it, it is it is very uh, you know very rigorous involvement in terms of mathematical modeling and other things. So remotely operated vehicle essentially it is a unmanned tethered semi-autonomous robotic vehicle that operates under the sea and is controlled from the surface by expert human operator. But till today, this kind of ROVs are uh, uh, used for inspection of sea falls and other purposes. 
but AUVs cannot be used to do that extent. Extent because basically AUV the main bottleneck is the communication. So in underwater environment, normally we used to have acoustic communication, but bandwidth of communication is very less. And RF communication or electromagnetic communication, it will not work in that manner. The acoustic communication is working because signal de uh, deteriorates or attenuates at a very faster rate. In case of a uh, acoustic, uh, in case of RF or uh, EM uh, electromagnetic communication. So if you see the classification of autonomous underwater vehicles, so autonomous underwater vehicle is an unmanned, untethered, intelligent robotic system having onboard energy and is controlled and piloted by an onboard computer. The robust intelligent controller under prevailing environmental conditions permit the vehicle to follow pre-programmed trajectories wherever and whenever required. So depending on the operating depth, the, we can have, uh, we can categorize AEVs in shallow water, that is up to 500 meter depth, mid water, that means 500 to 2,500 meter depth, and deep water, that is above 2,500 meter depth. And applications in science, monitoring, inspection, search and recovery, oil and gas, and mili military applications. So these are normally propeller or control surface driven, and these are having limited endurance. <clears throat> so, so the challenges of underwater technologies are mainly lies in, you know, it's a dynamic medium, then pressure increases over depth, then density and salinity variations are there, then temperature variations are there, corrosion uh, material selection is a major part, then absorption of electromagnetic radiation, then another challenge is for, you know, control, because it's a completely hazardous environment. You don't have the uh, possibility to use uh, any, uh, you know, high bandwidth uh, communication devices. And also, uh, uh, if you work beyond the, uh, be beyond certain range, like more than one kilometer uh, from your uh, control station, then you may not be able to track your vehicle within, uh, with the present day communication system that are available uh, at this moment internationally then uh, so that's why uh, these lot of challenges are there so that's why inner space is difficult to conquer but scientists are working towards that cmri is also working in that direction to achieve success uh, towards uh, uh, developing successful underwater uh, vehicle which can operate at a hazardous environment like sea uh, uh, as per our desired objective so design requirements of underwater vehicles are basically, you know, we need to uh, freeze the tentative specification. Then vehicles should be compact, lightweight, and it must have modular design. So we need to check for strength and rigidity. Then the design should be of minimum hydrodynamic drag and new, near neutral buoyant system. Basically, uh, near neutral buoyant system is uh, the requirement for underwater uh, system design if there is any leakage found in that case the vehicle uh, you know power system will be stopped and due to this positive buoyancy the vehicle is having so it will come back to the surface and accordingly the vehicle can be retrieved so it should also have uh, you know robustness and flexibility to incorporate payload or some uh, required navigational sensors then we need to select appropriate propeller and we need to design appropriate control surface depending on the shape and size of the vehicle. Depend selection of appropriate sensors in terms of navigational requirement as well as payloads, then bi-directional communication. So there should be, if it is a untethered vehicle like autonomous underwater vehicle, in that case, the communication should be uh, from ship to AUV as well as from AUV to the ship. So high data quality and efficiency, this is also required and operational reliability. So there should be a very robust framework uh, so that the navigation guidance and control uh, should uh, be achieved in a very perfect way and vehicle can, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it can achieve its desired objective. <coughs> Sorry. Then real time data monitoring, it is also required. So that is 
uh, will be possible when the communication framework will be very strong. Till now, for autonomous underwater vehicle, that communication framework is not uh, well established. Then we need to have redundancy. So in case of failure of one navigational sensor, because this is a completely unstructured environment, and when the vehicle is working underwater, so it is not getting any GPS uh, you know, interface. So in that case, the redundancy uh, has to be kept so that we can track the vehicle, we can uh, localize the vehicle, and we can achieve a uh, perfect navigation guidance and control. And finally, the health monitoring and emergency handling. So if we see the deep water research submersible, the global scenario is like this. Already I have said that Alvin was, uh, disco Alvin was made in 1964, which is uh, having depth rating of 4,500. Then in 1900, uh, sorry, it will be 6,500. In 1985, Nautile, uh, which was developed by France, which can be operated at 6,500 meter depth, and recently, we can see that China, they have developed a submersible, manned submersible, which can travel almost 11,000, uh, you know, 11,000 meter, that is 11 kilometer, that is a full ocean depth. So these are the uh, picture, Nautile, uh, Shinkai, and uh, Geolong. So India is also in this endeavor. Uh, probably you are aware that National Institute of Ocean Technology under Ministry of Earth Science they are developing, uh, you know, uh, man submersible 6000, which is uh, named as uh, Matsa, that means fish. And uh, it, is it is having, it is having uh, depth rating 6000 meter and uh, uh, payload of around uh, 200 kg, power source of around 100 kilowatt hour. And there will be various uh, emergency requirement as man will be uh, sitting inside and uh, he, uh, he will be driving this vehicle, but there will be all the precautions that uh, precautionary measures has to be taken as it is a man submersible. So uh, it is having personal sphere, human safety and support system, frame, ballast and trim system, buoyancy module, fairings, battery, propulsion system, penetrator assembly, control hardware and software, communication and navigation, imaging device and scientific payload. So these are, uh, you know, subsystem of this, uh, you know, vehicle developed, uh, de being designed by NIOT Chennai. This is under design stage and uh, they has to take the DNV certification for the human safety factors for the design of the vehicle. So it has got, this is the propulsion system, then ballast management system. So Normally, this kind of vehicles are subjected to uh, variable buoyancy engine sort of thing, uh, or uh, there will be uh, tank which will be filled up when the vehicle will be going down, and when the vehicle will come up at that time, water will be discharged. Uh, so, uh, in that way, the ballast uh, can be managed. Then it will have power source that is battery, the penetrator junction box, and then emergency rescue system personal sphere, so this sphere is a pressure hull basically, personal sphere hull, electric and signal penetrators, then spherical pressure hull, then life support system, communication system, navigation and guidance system. So it's a very complicated system and which involves a multidisciplinary team and they are working, uh, you know, very hard to uh, make it a success by 2024 uh, end. So this is this slide represents a survey of various kind of autonomous underwater vehicle. So that is available uh, throughout the world, like uh, ODC two developed by uh, MIT, then ODC four. This is also developed by MIT. Then uh, we have AutoSub six thousand uh, that is developed by uh, National Oceanographic Centre South Southern Term England, and then there are th thesis by uh, Canada. Then uh, Urashima by Japan, uh, that is Jamstack. Then uh, uh, torpedo shaped Dorado AV by USA. And of course, uh, uh, CMERI Durgapur also developed CME, uh, you know, AV for 150 meter and AV for 500 meter. And so these are the research issues for deep water AVs like navigation guidance and control, acoustic communication, advanced controller design then sensor and vision system, then structure and analysis, 
uh, reliable data transmission framework, then hydrodynamic and CFT modeling, energy system, and actuation scheme. So this is the overall portfolio of CMRI Durgapur. CMRI has developed AV, uh, which can uh, travel up to a depth of 150 meter at sea. And this picture shows the AV uh, lake trial and sea trial picture. Then ROV also CMRI has uh, capability to develop remotely operated vehicle, which can operate up to a depth of 500 meter. Then in the recent past, CMRI has also developed autonomous underwater vehicle, which can work at a depth of 500 meter. So these are the different picture of sea trial that was conducted during uh, March uh, 2017. So these are the possible applications under, you know, so this is AEV 500, so this is AEV 150, this is ROV uh, 500 meter, and recently we have also developed ROV with manipulation system, uh, which can uh, intervene in, uh, which can intervene in underwater scenario. Suppose some object has fallen down, then with this ROV and manipulation system, we, we can pick it up. Or if there is a requirement to clean the uh, sea fall, then with the manipulator it can do and further inspection can be, can be carried out by this ROV. So this, uh, you know, portfolio, it can be helpful for underwater exploration, security and surveillance, survey mapping and bathymetry, inspection of dam, then volume mapping of dam, then environmental monitoring, archaeological survey, then sea fall inspection and cleaning. So this is the details of AV150. Uh, so if you, uh, you know, see the specification, the operational depth is 150 meter, and it can perform seabed mapping, oceanographic data collection at various depth, like salinity, temperature, and conductivity. So finally, we came up with the dimension, like length 4.8 meter, diameter 0.5 meter, weight in air is 490 kgf and buoyancy for 95 kgf. The material was AI60601 T6. So first part is the lake trial, then we are having the sea trial also. So this vehicle, uh, you know, uh, it satisfactorily profiled the salinity, conductivity, temperature at different depth. Then we have mapped the seabed with side scan sonar, then underwater video image and using onboard camera, establishment of acoustic communication and endurance in rough sea environment. So the sea trial was conducted during the, uh, you know, directorship of Professor Gautam Biswas. So under the guidance of uh, Professor Vishas as well as the mentorship of Dr. Shom, we could successfully uh, conduct the sea trial at Chennai coast with active support from NIOT Chennai. So this is the ROV, uh, you know, shallow water to sea trial. So we have uh, achieved the depth of 506 meter. Then surface operations was conducted uh, in a successful manner. Then sound velocity, salinity, temperature at various depth was also uh, found out. Then underwater inspection through videography images that was also carried out. And this is a glimpses of the video of the sea trial. So this is the control console from where we are monitoring the operation of this.
to the launching of ROV. <clears throat> So this is the uh, graphical user interface <clears throat> through which we are monitoring the depth of ROV. So this is uh, AUV 500. So with that experience, we uh, we have uh, you know uh, uh, we we uh, have taken the challenge to develop AV for 500 meter as well as 100 meter of uh, depth. So uh, we carried out the design as well as all the uh, analysis uh, starting from uh, hydrodynamics, then control simulation, uh, then uh, uh, act calibration of actuator as well as sensors, and then uh, you know um, overall navigation guidance and control framework that also we have designed and communication framework also has been designed and the vehicle was tested during uh, 2017 from the Goa coast. So this is the glimpses of the video of this AV500. So as I said that, uh, you know, apart from developing this, uh, you know, very high end, uh, high class uh, AUV or ROV, we are also currently, we are also involved in developing portable ROV with manipulation system, which can be helpful for inspection and minor intervention, which can be utilized for inspection of sea fall. And the rotary actuator that uh, is also developed at, uh, in an indigenous manner indigenously designed underwater linear actuator, so which is coupled with this uh, manipulator, manipulator. So uh, so subsequently what I can say that CMRI is having the uh, expertise in design and analysis of robotic system, underwater robotic system, then power energy, uh, power or energy system design, hydrodynamic modeling, CFD, then RF acoustic or hybrid communication framework, then advanced controller with obstacle avoidance, then navigation guidance and mission planner. So if we, uh, now I, I want to go uh, just like a case study that how we have come across uh, to develop that kind of system. So which I have shown the video as well as the, uh, you know, uh, basic uh, specification of the system. So this is a typical scenario. So this is the ship and this is the where AEP is working. So there is a bi-directional communication link and navigational payload sensor, energy system, onboard intelligence, propeller, all the things are embedded with this vehicle. So propulsion actuation system and there are obstacle avoidance sonar. So with this you know, forward looking sonar, whenever it will be uh, navigating uh, for a particular uh, trajectory, so it will uh, detect uh, if there is any obstacle in its path and it will deviate from the path and again it will come back to its original path with the help of obstacle awareness module and this mapping or seabed mapping that will be carried out by surgical sonar or multi-beam sonar so this is the basic framework and this aev uh, particularly aev 150 is having you know uh, uh, five propellers so you can see this vehicle so this is a main thruster or uh, which is providing only the surge motion and these two are the uh, you know uh, horizontal thrusters 
which can move the body along uh, y axis or so a direction as well as it will be helping to get the yaw motion and there are two vertical propellers with these two vertical propellers the vehicle can move up and down as well as we can control the pitch motion so this with these five propellers essentially we are uh, we are uh, you know controlling five degrees of freedom but role of the vehicle is not actively controlled that the <clears throat> components are placed you know, inside the vehicle in such a way that uh, whenever there is a disturbance role will be automatically uh, it will be uh, gradually decreasing due to uh, you know uh, mechanical design so this vehicle uh, already uh, i have shown you the video so this is the different module of this vehicle nose module thrust module power module then again there is another thrust module computational module and tail module this is the original vehicle and this is the cad model and various components are embedded inside the heavy part is the battery so that is placed at the center module and there are five propellers one is at the uh, so this is the tail which is called main thruster and this is the cad model and there are five propellers two vertical and two horizontal so with this five propeller we are controlling five degrees of freedom and there are navigational sensors like dvl ins and all this sort of thing and payload sensor like side scan sonar we have used and apart from that we have used depth sensor as well as altimeter to know the vehicle depth as well as uh, to know uh, the distance of the seabed from the vehicle the material has been used as aluminum uh, 6061 t6 aluminum alloy so these are the various photo uh, you know various uh, module of this some detail uh, picture and the uh, orientation of all the components including the payload sensor navigational sensor as well as actuators has been shown in this cross sectional view so this as i said this is the heaviest part because battery lithium polymer battery is uh, placed inside lithium polymer battery is having high energy density and uh, uh, that's why we have used lithium polymer battery then this is the dvl doppler velocity log and ins uh, you know for localization of the vehicle and uh, it is also having gps antenna when the vehicle will be on the surface then through gps we can update the vehicle position and it is also subjected to uh, you know acoustic modem so which is the transponder part and transceiver part is fitted with the ship so through this acoustic communication link as well as acoustic positioning link we will be able to update the absolute position of the vehicle when the vehicle is operating underwater as we know that ins it consists of accelerometer and gyroscope the rate of propagation of error for this kind of uh, you know inertia sensors are very high that's why we need to have some absolute positioning sensors so here this acoustic uh, you know communication uh, acoustic positioning will help to get the absolute position when the vehicle is operating underwater and when the vehicle is on the surface the gps will help the, to get the absolute position so it is uh, in a number of thrusters are also placed and at the front part you know there are forward looking sonar camera and light and side scan sonar is placed uh, um, towards the uh, forward direction only so which is uh, uh, which is used to map the sea floor and this is the computational module so where single board computers are placed and the, at the tail side also there is another computational module which can uh, you know store the payload data as we are not able to communicate the payload data to the um, uh, to the ship console uh, due to communication uh, you know bandwidth restriction so these are the sensors which are used for uh, aev or rov proper safety sensors like imu inertial measurement unit which consists of three axis gyroscope and three axis accelerometer from the gyroscope we can get the angular rate and from the accelerometer we can get acceleration information and from the gyro uh, angular rate we can position the uh, we, we can get the angular positions like roll pitch and yaw and from the accelerometer uh, linear acceleration we can get uh, the x y z position that is known as sharp sway and heave this is the doppler velocity log this is a depth sensor and then altimeter 
and external safety sensor or payload sensors are also attached like external safety sensors like we have you know ultra short baseline system then uh, you know side scan sonar is the payload or our looking sonar is the obstacle avoidance sonar and apart from that we have flasher for detecting the vehicle and conduct ctd conductivity temperature and depth sensor this is the payload sensor and camera is also a payload sensor so if we go for dynamics of the vehicle then we can uh, you know statically we can see that when the vehicle when a vehicle is floating on the surface or it is uh, just floating um, in a submerged way in that case the the, the forces that are acting on the vehicle is the buoyancy force and gravity force but when the vehicle is in motion in that case you know the frontal drag will also take place which is in the opposite direction so forward thrust will be providing but the thruster frontal drag will be working in opposite direction vertical thrust uh, will be uh, giving towards downward when the vehicle will be going downwards and simultaneously it is going at frontal direction also then buoyancy force is also acting normally in case of marine vehicle uh, it is always preferable that cg point lies uh, you know below the cd center of buoyancy uh, to achieve the stability of the vehicle so uh, after that we uh, we have designed aev which can operate up to a depth of uh, you know 500 meter uh, so uh, some of the uh, some of the design steps what we have followed that will be shown in the subsequent slides so this is the dynamic model so probably all of you are aware that uh, you know it consists of uh, inertia force then coriolis and centripetal term then damping term as well as the gravity uh, gravity related term and it is uh, the right side is represented by the generalized force and kinematics uh, we can see that eta dot equal to j eta into v so here eta is the uh, coordinate which are expressed uh, with the help of uh, you know uh, inertia frame uh, inert, uh, inertial or arc fixed frame and this v which have been expressed with respect to the body coordinate frame so so this uh, overall you know generalized force vector in consists of three uh, linear force x y and z and uh, three moments k m and n and corresponding uh, positions with respect to the uh, arc fixed frame at x y z and corresponding orientations are uh, you know phi theta and psi so in marine uh, term which is uh, governed by the s name uh, you know uh, 1950 so s name is society for uh, naval architecture and marine engineers so they have defined the convention of underwater vehicle so like uh, in x0 is the search that means um, uh, it is which is uh, the velocity in that direction is denoted by u then y direction y direction we can see that it is sway and the velocity linear velocity is denoted by v and z direction it is uh, it is the heave and the velocity is denoted by w and as well as the uh, orientations are denoted by uh, you know rotation with respect to x axis is roll and rotation with respect to uh, y axis is pitch and rotation with z axis uh, is denoted by uh, you know yaw so uh, you know for dynamic calculation evaluation of hydrodynamic derivatives is challenging task reliable estimate is done through cfd analysis so hi for hydrodynamics fast we have to do the uh, we have to uh, discretize the vehicle the grid on the hull surface and grid on the tail cone that has been done so red lines are on a scan plane showing grid distribution io from the no slip surface so then we have uh, we have given different conditions like angle of attack 0 degree like for angle, angle of uh, attack 0 degree and with the length of 3 meter and diameter of 0.4 meter what will be the drag uh, the vehicle will be uh, subjected to when it is moving at various velocities like 1 meter per second or 1.5 meter per second 2 meter per second like that so then angle of attack 10 degree and 20 degree also the different kind of drag uh, drags has been calculated uh, basically uh, different models we have used so we have used the fluent uh, you know ansys fluent uh, solver as well as allen parkins uh, model and for uh, you know all of that uh, we have compared it and uh, here we can see that sideways growth of vertices on three different planes along the length 
at 20 degree angle of attack. So this is the QN data. And as uh, we have seen that for for AV uh, 500, we have used this kind of thing, the fins, dynamic fins. And here, in case of AV 500, we have used only three thrusters instead of five thrusters. So that's why this control th surface or radar, this plays a dominant role here towards navigation and guidance of the vehicle. So in this case, we need to see how we can design this control surface. The control surface design is governed by some numerical laws. So here, the area of the control surface is calculated uh, by this. So here, D is the diameter of the AEV and L is the length of the AEV. For control surface not behind the propeller, so DNV suggests an additional increase by at least 30 percent. So a further 50 percent increase suggested in C scout report by uh, Cartes. Okay. So these are the uh, sample calculations. So what has been um, utilized for our vehicle and which have been manufactured and fitted with the AV500 and we have got the desired performance as we expected. So this is the hydrodynamic parameters that had been uh, calculated using the CFD as well as uh, this is also validated, uh, you know, writing a program in Fortran for a three, uh, you know, degree of freedom system. and. Uh, so like a turning circle diameter of 8 to 10 meter is predicted for the dry vehicle, which is likely to reduce by 13 to 18 percent for the flooded condition. So hydrodynamic derivatives estimated from Munk, Allen, Perkins model. So derivatives are multiplied by 1000 and uh, this has been tabulated here and uh, this very fairly matches uh, with the uh, other configurations that has been reported in the literature, whatever sol solver we have developed. So that has been verified with that. So this is the control aspect of AEV. So we should have a desired trajectory. Then we will have a robust controller. The robust controller will uh, deliver the required uh, you know, control input like faster voltage. So that vehicle is associated with the number of propellers as well as control surface. Then it will, when the uh, voltage will be delivered, the vehicle will move. Then actual trajectory will be measured by the thruster and it will be compared. And accordingly, we can have various kind of trajectories uh, 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 through development of robust controller. So uh, autopilots for steering, uh, speed steering, diving, and planned missions, we have initially tried with PID controller. Then we have designed sliding mode controllers to achieve uh, very uh, high accuracy and also we have tried with other robust control methodology like robust outer loop and uh, subsequent methods. Then state estimations we did by Kalman filter and obstacle avoidance and decision making by the fuzzy logic. So this is some of the simulated trajectory profiles that has been uh, achieved uh, with the help of the controller that we have developed. Like we need to uh, follow a you know, lawnmower mission. Uh, for uh, you know survey of the seabed, so that kind of simulation trajectory has been placed here. So suppose AEV is at the beginning, AEV is on the surface, then it will come back to the particular uh, depth where it, ha it has to do the survey, and then it will perform the lawnmower motion. So this is the lawnmower trajectory, and while performing the lawnmower trajectory, what is the heading of the AEV that has also been plotted here. So this is the zigzag maneuver of the AEV 500 that has been uh, conducted with respect to time. So where uh, this uh, psi, uh, you know, psi uh, delta and r, it denotes psi is the U angle, r is the U angle rate, and delta is the radar angle. So this uh, profile has been generated with the help of uh, CFT analysis as well as a indigenous program developed with Fortran. So this is the overall control navigation and guidance schematic. So, so overall, uh, you know, we have a trajectory tracker. So uh, then we have robust controller, then vehicle dynamic model. So this part is an autopilot. And from the dynamic model, it is, uh, you know, uh, giving that uh, required uh, vehicle, uh, you know, we are getting that uh, required control input and it is going to the vehicle. And that vehicle position and velocity, these are being measured with the help of sensors like INS, inertial navigation system, Doppler velocity log. Uh, so then this data has been sent to a sensor fusion module. 
as well as we will have communication from the ship and AV from there with the help of you know acoustic positioning system we can get that absolute data that absolute data is also fed in the intuition module we will also have the depth sensor and altimeter data so from this uh, you know, uh, sensor fusion module, we get, we can get a best possible estimate of the system state and which is again feedback. And accordingly, uh, other informations like uh, if there is any obstacle, that also we can get using the forward looking sonar and that will be also embedded within this trajectory tracker. So we also need to do actuator and sensor calibration if we want to uh, achieve a uh, you know a very uh, robust trajectory and accurate tra and reliable trajectory so we need to do the test of that uh, individual propellers and uh, sensors uh, to calibrate it uh, properly so normally the sensor characterizations ha is having uh, different kind of noises sensors are having different kind of noises like deterministic noises which can be removed using calibration but it is also subjected to stochastic noises so that has to be uh, for that we need to have uh, apply various methods like Allen variance methods or modified Allen variance or time variance to find out uh, you know uh, the random noise and to eliminate that. So uh, for this purpose we have also characterized the sensor using uh, these methods whatever just uh, in the previous slide I have shown and accordingly we have found out this uh, you know uh, velocity random work bias instability and acceleration random work all these kind of parameter for x axis y axis and z axis accelerometers so then uh, as you see that sensor fusion is a very important part of uh, any uh, you know complicated robotic system because uh, some of the sensors they are getting giving us complementary information and some of the sensors uh, we, they are getting redundant information also. Now, how to rely on that? So, if uh, we are uh, we are adding you know two different sensors and those are having uh, those, both of them are giving same data, then we need to combine them uh, combine the sensor information to get improved quality of the data. So that can be mathematically proven that if we if we combine the two opinions the uh, you know, resultant opinion will be better than the best of that two opinions. So that is all that can be also proven mathematically. So these, uh, you know, sensors are located at uh, different locations. So with respect to the global frame, uh, you know, we can have different uh, uh, body frame of each and every sensors. Now, then all the sensors are mapped with respect to the overall body frame that is principal axis of symmetry of that uh, autonomous underwater vehicle and then from there it has been transferred to the global frame. So this is the uh, mathematical framework of sensor fusion. So it can be proven that if there are a number of sensors like Z1, Z2, uh, Z3 which is measuring suppose X position only. In that case we can combine this information in this way and the overall uh, gains we can calculate in this way. So if the standard deviation of Z1 is sigma 1, standard deviation of Z2 is sigma 2 and Zn is sigma n, then weight of K1 will be, uh, weight of uh, sensor Z1 will be sigma 1, 1 by sigma 1 square into 1 by sigma 1 square plus 1 by sigma 2 square like this. So and overall variance will also reduce, okay. So here this map is uh, what it indicates that suppose the blue color is the sensor 1 and uh, the green uh, red color is the sensor 2. Then the final estimate will be the greater than the better than these two sensor data. Okay. So here you can see that uh, you know uh, standard deviation has reduced for the green color. Okay. So this is the final estimate. So that's why Whatever sensor quality might be, if we combine the information, the, it will enrich the information. So the communication is also a major bottleneck, as we said, for underwater related developments. We can see that acoustic communication bandwidth is very limited. And in present day, the Indian Navy and other DRTO labs, they are looking for very high endurance AV, which can operate at sea for 30 days or more than 30 days, particularly for surveillance aspect of uh, our uh, motherland. So in that case, 
uh, whenever the vehicle will be moving, uh, you know, from the uh, moving away from the ship around more than two kilometers, in that case, we will not be able to track it because the, it will be beyond the acoustic range. So that's why we need to have very, uh, you know, uh, high dimension, higher dimensional uh, communication system and research should be carried out further in that direction, not only in India, but internationally also a lot of research is going on, but India, uh, no such research is going on in that direction, particularly to the, uh, particularly towards improving the communication framework uh, for underwater uh, vehicles. So here, in case of our AEV-150, whenever we have used, uh, utilized this uh, communication framework, it was only uh, 80 bytes of data. That means uh, around 640 uh, bits per second we used to get uh, for uplink and downlink. And whenever we have used for AEV-500, in that case, we have in, uh, found some uh, increment of data like this one. So we have used for our AEV-500. Here, the bit rate is around 13.9 uh, kbps. So this is also theoretically written. Whenever we will be applying this for in our real scenario, we found that it is working almost 25% of its uh, desire of, of the specified specification. So we used to get almost uh, like, uh, you know, 3 uh, kbps of data, though it was mentioned 13.9 kbps. Uh, for a German uh, system, Evologix SC, S2CR 1840 USTL. So these are the bottlenecks. So that's why we need to have strategies to, uh, you know, deploy the vehicle which will be working beyond the acoustic range and how to tackle the navigation guidance and control of that and tracking of that vehicle is very important, uh, particularly from Indians' uh, uh, parlance. So these are some of the results what we have achieved uh, during the leg trial and sea trial of the vehicle, what we have been uh, discussed just now, observation from lecture. This is a lawnmower profile. We have, uh, we have uh, basically, uh, we want to achieve a lawnmower profile. So this is the theory, uh, uh, you know, desired one, and that is the achieved one, real one. So this is the observation from lake trial, the depth rate, depth, uh, you know, eight meter depth we want to achieve and uh, whatever uh, has been achieved by the vehicle that has been plotted. Then this is the 80 meter depth trial. So uh, this is the desired depth and this is the depth achieved by the vehicle. So which shows that controller performs in a very, uh, you know, better way. So these are the uh, lake and sea trial. This is the 150 meter depth specification. And this is the uh, vehicle is moving at a depth of 80 meter and perform some desired trajectory. And these are some of the video captured uh, during the uh, sea trial as well as lake trial. And this is the 3D profile mapped by the uh, sonar data. Uh, the side scan sonar was mounted on the vehicle and the 3D profile was mapped. So essentially, uh, you know, for while developing this kind of vehicle, so CMRI has uh, got expertise in the domain of, uh, uh, in the multidisciplinary domain of developing uh, autonomous underwater vehicle and its subsequent uh, variants. So uh, essentially, uh, we have expertise in the development of stress analysis. Uh, then hydrodynamics, grid generation and hydrodynamics, then control surface design. This is the control surface what we have used for AEV 500. Then grid generation is required to study the hydrodynamics uh, using different models. Then stress analysis, basically uh, whenever the vehicle will be operated for 500 meter depth, it has to be subjected to, it will be subjected to 50 bar pressure. So for that we need to say, see that which one is the width, uh, which is the critical zone. So that kind of analysis we need to perform. Then kinematics and dynamic model we have to, uh, you know, derive. Then uh, we need to uh, do the sensor calibration, modeling, and fusion to get the proper estimate of system state towards localization of the vehicle. Then we need to have a robust control and navigational framework. Uh, of course, the actuation, actu actuated calibration also needs to be done if possible. And finally, the payload data is most important thing. 
uh, we need to map uh, uh, the payload data and uh, we from there we need to diagonalize what is the uh, what is the depth at different uh, location of the sea or if you need to uh, you know survey some water body we need to uh, also say or uh, through this graph that what are the depths at different different location of that water body and this is the sensor fusion uh, module what i have just described so apart from that so this is in underwater domain apart from that we started developing some of the components like underwater manipulators so uh, also the subsea thruster, thruster also we have indigenously developed uh, so this is a very recent development the six month back uh, we have tested this propeller because most of the components of underwater systems are not indigenously available. Almost 80% of the components of vehicle development are imported. So that's why we have taken an initiative just one and a half year back to develop subsea thruster and we have succeeded in that. So this thruster has been designed for 100, uh, 1,500 meter of depth, that is 1.5 kilometer. Power rating is 1.1 kilowatt and thrust which, what we can achieve is around 221 kg force that is 210 Newton and weight of the thruster is 4.8 kg. The motor has been indigenously built in collaboration with a Mumbai based uh, you know, uh, uh, electrical firm. So BLDC drive and PCB all has been indigenously designed for this subsea thruster development. So this is the experimental test setup at our uh, CMRI, uh, 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 as our CMRI office. And this is the task force that has been generated uh, uh, with the help of experiment, as well as it has been verified with the CFD analysis data. So this is, uh, we have also worked in the direction of biomimetic underwater fish spin like actuators, uh, which uh, is also uh, required to cover uh, a very high area with uh, number of smaller vehicles. So which can be also very useful for surveillance in the, uh, in the, uh, for surveillance of Indian territory, particularly uh, on the surface of uh, under, uh, ocean. So this kind of vehicle is the, this kind of vehicle, uh, uh, we are also looking for some bigger project in that uh, domain. Uh, we are uh, talking with uh, you know Ministry of Earth Science in this figure. So further, we are looking uh, for homing and docking system. You know that AUV is uh, autonomous underwater vehicle, but launching and retrieval of this kind of autonomous underwater vehicle is very risky. So to avoid that, people are now thinking to develop a system which can reside on the sea floor and which will have the uh, uh, provision of power. So in that case, the AUV, there is no need to take the, uh, to retrieve the AUV uh, several times. Once you are deploying, you can keep the vehicle for one month's time. And whenever the battery, uh, you know, charge is uh, uh, going down to a certain threshold, in that case, vehicle can go to that station and it can be charged uh, at, a, uh, at the sea floor only. So this will uh, basically uh, reduce the risk of uh, uh, risk of retrieval as well as the damage of the vehicle uh, due to uh, during retrieval. So for that uh, for that need, the people are looking for homing and docking system. We have also given one proposal to Ministry of Earth Science, and hopefully uh, within a very short time, this proposal is going to be approved, and we will be working that. But it is a very challenging task. So this launching and uh, sorry, homing and rocking system is required to uh, the challenging task is particularly the reach a safe positioning zone. Suppose the AUV is working at a particular uh, at a particular place and this is the docking unit. Now that AUV need to be uh, taken at a uh, at this location for charging. Suppose the charger is here, uh, particularly the power connection is here. So that is a very challenging task. So how to take a AUV uh, from a distance place to this, uh, you know, docking unit. So that that guidance is very very challenging. So particularly these are the steps. So reach a safe positioning zone that is easy compared to 
take it that vehicle to this narrow space. Then switch from obstacle awareness mode to dock mode to electromagnetic camera or image processing, or it might be to acoustic means also. Then dynamically stabilize the vehicle, then approach towards the docking platform and dock with the help of mechanical means. So this uh, homing and docking system is very challenging to us, but it will essentially it will help us to charge the vehicle as well as towards the data transfer. Basically, whatever data the vehicle is acquiring due to, uh, uh, you know, during surveying or other uh, payload applications, that uh, data needs to be retrieved and it has to be available to the control station towards further analysis. So that is the challenge and hopefully uh, we will be able to do it successfully once the project is approved. So now the recent trend is that how the, uh, you know, human and underwater vehicle, they will work together to achieve a uh, desired objective. So to enhance the capability and easy working of the underwater divers by having underwater divers do the things, AUVs cannot and having AUVs do the things, underwater divers cannot. So human robot interaction and human perception using computer vision, artificial intelligence, machine and deep learning with the intent of creating systems that can work collaboratively with humans in challenging environments. Suppose here I have shown the uh, diagram. So uh, like uh, there is a uh, diver, they are uh, looking for uh, uh, executing some task for a ship. So in that case, the lighting up areas, bringing tools, searching up lost tools or monitoring the diver cell, that can be done by some underwater vehicle, like uh, with the help of uh, a camera and that uh, information can be fed back to the surface station. Like this ROV, it can gather the information of the diver, what it is doing, it can provide uh, the light uh, in that area, it can bring the tools with its manipulator and also it can feed back the information to the, uh, I mean, control master who is sitting at the surface. So accordingly, the decision can be taken. So this is the end of my slide. So possible current and futuristic activities like AUVs with long endurance range for monitoring, exploration and surveillance. So the, as, as I said that Indian Navy, they are looking for very high endurance AV, which can operate at a, uh, at shallow depth, like 300 meter or 400 meter, but it can operate at sea for 30 days or more. So that kind of, uh, you know, AV that needs very stealth uh, uh, information, uh, very, uh, uh, the propeller uh, should uh, not produce uh, high noise. Uh, it should uh, have, uh, you know, uh, stealth uh, operation so that other enemies, they can not uh, detect that kind of AUVs. Then homing and docking system for AUVs or uh, uh, unmanned underwater vehicle or autonomous underwater vehicle. Then multi-vehicle like portable and stealth class AUVs. Then uh, multi-vehicle cooperation uh, with, uh, uh, with the portable and stealth class AUVs. Uh, it is also called multi-agen system. So for various application requirements like wide area search, survey and surveillance, and hybrid underwater vehicle. So in a single vehicle, we can have both the feature and depending on the requirement, we can convert it in a AUV or in a ROV mode. Then miniaturized biometric, biomimetic underwater vehicles, then unmanned underwater vehicle manipulation intervention system for inspection, repair and cleaning, then autonomous intelligent uh, class surface crafts, then unsupervised scene modeling and anomaly detection. So this is very, uh, you know, highly mathematical uh, work, but which will be helpful for the surveillance class uh, vehicles. And of course, uh, as I said, that India is uh, very uh, still at a very nascent stage in terms of components of underwater systems. So that's why there is a, a huge need to develop thrusters, sensors, communication system, for uh, autonomous underwater vehicles as well as, uh, uh, you know, related systems. So uh, with this, I, this is the acknowledgement to director, Ministry of Earth Science, Ministry of Science and Technology, NIOT Chennai, IIT Kharagpur, 
and QL Cochin. And thank you. And of course, I thank my alma mater, IIST Shipku, for giving me a chance to deliver a lecture uh, uh, in this session. So thank you so much. So if there is any question, I am uh, ready to answer. Thank you, Dr. Nandi. Uh, the session chair had to leave the connection to keep another appointment. So allow me to coordinate the session for the rest of it. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I mean, the quantum work is really, really uh, astonishing, I should say. The words will be falling short. I want to appreciate. So any, without uh, saying more, I would uh, leave it to the house. There must be a lot of queries and questions, but uh, probably I would, uh, it would be better if uh, if we can have the opening words from Professor Ghosh, Professor Mollik. Uh, I understand both of them were there. Uh, we used to be there in the committee, research committee for CMRI. So if sir, if you have any queries or any comments to make first, we also have Professor uh, Bishas there, I find. So he must also be having some demos. So Professor Host, please, if you have anything to say. Presentation and Nondi has very uh, nicely presented the whole overview of the underwater robotic system. It is, and he has been able to impress upon all of you that how complicated and difficult the task is. And this genesis, it has a very interesting history, this underwater robotics activity of CMRI. In 2000, uh, uh, I had a meeting uh, at Kharagpur with the Secretary of the Ocean Development Department, Dr. Reddy Musturali. He wanted to give a project to IIT Kharagpur of underwater robotics. It came in 2001. I was also associated with uh, CMRI from 2001, January 1st. So, and my opinion was that this TSI labs must have a close linkage with the uh, IIT system and something like that. So, I shared that project with CMRI. He will develop the basic physical system. And IIT Kharagpur was given the responsibility of communication and control because underwater communication is a tough thing. And as you can see that the activity started in 2001 and it has taken more than two decades to reach the current level. But I think the initially the testing, etc., were being done, I think in Cochin, most probably when Shankar, whatever he told me, Dr. Shankar Som was looking after the project for almost more than a decade or so, because I, am, I was aware of till 2013, July, the activities. After that, I left CMRI and I didn't know what happened. But from Dr. Nandi's work, I am very happy to see that it has really progressed much farther and it is still continuing and it's an extremely challenging task and it must be appreciated that what wonderful work is being continued at CMRI. My hearty congratulations to the team. <laughs> and also, we must remember the untiring effort by Dr. Shankar Shom. More than 12 years, he worked on this project. Initially, nothing was known was available and it was an extremely difficult task. So thank you very much for the wonderful presentation and I was really very happy to see the development. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for thank your you, sir. praise the words. Well, queries from audience. <clears throat> sir, Professor Monlik is there. Sir, any comments you would like to make? Professor Vishash. Uh, I have nothing to add yeah. what Professor Ghosh has said. I used to see the presentation in, during that time. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I think, middle of 2000, uh, around 2007 or 8. But it has progressed a huge bit, obviously, 15 years, yeah. and they have done an excellent work. That much I can say. Yeah. A Thank lot of sub systems uh, are involved. Uh, so, uh, uh, Ashokda and uh, Antavada uh, have already mentioned a lot of things, uh, but uh, this project, uh, Shombhu's work, uh, uh, we have seen. It. I mean, uh, thank you, Shombhu. I mean, <laughs> thank my, you, sir. my you know heartfelt congratulations, and uh, I mean, uh, absolutely. 
fantastic uh, work. Uh, what Tommy Dhamudha said uh, that uh, taking cue from there, actually uh, this uh, trial was done in Iduki Lake in Kerala, but uh, that trial uh, was done uh, in 2010 and 11. Nine and ten, sir. Nine and Nine ten. ten. Yes. Sir. And then finally, when it was to be taken to uh, Bay of Bengal, that was a very big challenge, and uh, <clears throat> plenty of uh, uh, hurdles were there. And even finally, getting a carrier was uh, hugely <laughs> difficult. So we contacted N NIOT. And NIOT gave us. Have you mentioned uh, Shumbu? I was not uh, throughout present about yes, Shagarmiti. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, NIOT is active support only. We could do the test. Yeah. Shagarmiti yeah. sheep. The video was also. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as such, uh, uh, some of the you know uh, sonar captured uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, obs while uh, uh, this uh, obstacle avoidance, etc., were done, those uh, photographs were also there, uh, wrote those videos. Um, I don't know whether Shambhu has I, used I, those videos. I have, yeah. uh, I have shown, yeah. Okay, Please so I have, to, I have still a few videos with me. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, it was really marvelous work, but Amitabhuda and Ashuka, both of you, I can tell you, uh, you will feel bad. I also feel terrible that this program, uh, both of you left before me. After that, I left for IIT Guwahati. But this program was all of a sudden killed. They actually, you know, what Shambhu showed is uh, almost, uh, he, uh, and uh, uh, Shom had to also leave uh, Shankar Shom. Uh, Shankar Shom means not uh, Professor Shankar Shom, I'm saying Dr. Shankar Shom, who is uh, a group leader. See, there is little confusion between two Shankar Shoms. Both are alumni of IIT, I, uh, 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 both are alumni of IIT, uh, 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 IAST and IIT. My professor uh, Shankar Shom is a great contributor in fluid mechanics, but he was not so much involved in this project. Um, uh, uh, mentioned about contribution of SN Shom, who is uh, another Shankar Shom, but from the beginning he was in same year, right? And he was student of Amitabhada and Ashoka both. Uh, uh, finally, he of course completed his PhD from uh, NIT. Anyway, to cut the long story short, Shankar means uh, senior Shankar Shom is my teacher also. I'm not talking about sir, but um, junior Shankar Shom, who is uh, you know group leader of this, he also left, and then we applied for a very big project, which is. Uh, AUV 3000 to uh, basically planning commission. It was approved 12 uh, plan project. And uh, Shombu and uh, good, I mean, uh, Shane was also there, Shombu, I guess. No? This, uh, he's yeah. still there, probably. Uh, Dr. So, Ronji Tere, uh, Shoman Shane, yes. He... Shoman Shane. Uh, it he... was a he is not uh, so much associated with the uh, this uh, vehicle, uh, but uh, he he has worked in biomimetic uh, that part. And uh, see, his contribution in obstacle avoidance, etc., indirectly came, but it was quite okay. I mean, yeah. quite uh, substantial. Uh, uh, he... But the whatever happened, I do not know. From outside, I could not do much. I tried a lot to continue so that same year I can continue with this project. Uh, it is better to avoid bitter part, but probably now yeah. again, a good weather has come, good situation yes, yes. has come. Probably Shambhu is, you know, after the, you know, uh, who, who took over from me, after he left, it is again a very free ambience and 
Shambhu and team, they are doing fantastic work. I hope that they get a massive success with uh, their renewed endeavor and uh, new vehicle they are planning for. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. In big projects, yes, normal hiccups are supposed to be there. But uh, I was no, having no, a question. Project, was, project was stopped. It is not hiccup. The pro it, they have a, you know, they have everything, all the infrastructure in the, it was created, Amitabhada knows, with a lot of effort and, and uh, I mean, objection from uh, uh, vigilance and all, you know, how such a big pond was created in uh, academic institute, mm -hmm. I mean, a research institute. I had to reply those queries, you know, personally almost uh, nights after nights. But, uh, you know, all the, with all these things, you know, we sailed through. But somehow this project was stopped by force almost, you know, from the top. Uh, but now, as I said, it was an unfortunate situation. But now, again, you know, uh, Shumbu is free and the whole team is working very rigorously for the project. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, uh, you know, as I said that Navy is looking for very high endurance AEVs, 30 days. So we have got one project from them. It is for design guidance, though it is a confidential information. And uh, but Shambhu, and you got another uh, another uh, one from IIT Guwahati also that has been. Yeah, but yeah. You, uh, uh, there is one entrepreneur also who wants to uh, uh, create commercial AUV for uh, you know uh, this. Big water uh, or, 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 no, no, no. That is uh, in the hand of ministry. This is commercial AUV can be used for oil rigs, for okay. you know, as coast guard or at uh, coast guard for the oil rigs. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, wherever the navy territory, there are a lot of defense related uh, problems are there, and they always go for you know uh, Japanese or Swedish product because of you know they cannot aff avoid or they cannot afford any mis small mistake. But for private sector, like, uh, you know, this uh, oil exploration related sectors, you know, they are very keen. And one uh, uh, company from uh, Hyderabad. PRS. Uh, uh, yes, I, I am yeah. in contact uh, with him. And he is also associated with the Gohati project as industry partner. He keeps writing to me quite often that, uh -huh. you know, I should do something, but no, actually, you know, sir, I will uh, talk offline regarding that one. Okay, well, uh, so thank you I for your meeting. Yes. I was having a query, Dr. Nondi. Yes, um, uh, as, as you mentioned, that now you could reach 500 meters. So, what really is the challenge if we try to uh, expand on that front on the depth front? Let's say from 500 to 1000, uh, where exactly is the largest challenge? I mean, uh, from which front is uh, because communication, uh, if you are going for the, uh, I mean, you, he... Professor, Professor Ghosh, very simple problem is you cannot seal the vehicle. The uh, onboard computer and the entire, you know, autopilot system, that is to be absolutely protected. And if you have, yeah. you know, if so you know, only, only... No, one is the depth rating. So for that, your the design variation, yeah. for that, your, uh, you know, design variations will be and there. And getting all your instruments for that. Yeah. No. Yeah. So first thing is depth rating. Yeah. So every sensor has to be at least 500 meter depth rated. Your cell should be, uh, the pressure hull should reduce that uh, more than, uh, more than at least 60 bar pressure because there should be some factor of safety. And whenever your, you uh, know, mass of the system is increasing and say all this uh, uh, vehicle mass is also increasing then due to higher depth, in that case, we need to have higher battery power also. And whenever again battery is increasing, your size of the vehicle is also. So there it is a, you know, I mean, iteration, lot of iteration you have to do to come up. Yeah, at right. the and in that scenario, get maneuvering, your, maneuvering your vehicle in that scenario is also... Maneuvering, maneuvering is not a, not a problem, a problem, but 
problem is the communication range as we said no that i have shown you that uh, specification of a uh, german uh, you know communication system acoustic that is uh, that company is known as evologix so they are saying that uh, you know uplink or downlink the uplink data rate is around 14 kbps but actually when we have tested in uh, you know real environment we have got only 25% of that okay so so and suppose if the range is told around 3 km then you will be getting at the most 600 meter or like this okay so up to 500 meter there is no such uh, problem but if you go for higher uh, you know range like what i said that uh, drdo or indian navy uh, particularly in military domain they are looking for very high endurance av where range can be in the tune of 2000 km also so in that case how you will be communicating in that vehicle so and also it it should be a stealth class vehicle so the location of the vehicle or the movement of the vehicle should be uh, very less noise production noise uh, produced by the vehicle should be very less so that others cannot detect that some vehicle is walking here so mm-hmm. tracking that vehicle is really a task uh, top task so, so normally the this kind of systems are uh, people are trying so it, at each and every day it will come up to the surface maybe three four times okay and then it will be transmitted uh, uh, satellite uh, in, through satellite it, the vehicle position will be transmitted to the control station and its position will be also updated with the help of gps okay because it is it is beyond the acoustic range also when they were it will be working around 100 km away from the sea shore so through acoustic communication also we are we will not be able to track only through satellite means so in the vehicle will be taken to the surface that that communication will be possible mm-hmm. so, uh, shombudya what yes, about sir. the see, we we started some collaboration with nstl so yes sir it is uh, nstl uh, you know last three actually i am also in one of the committee so they are uh, developing a high endurance av for which can stay at ocean for 10 10 days like that so initially that proposal was given by uh, ntro to us okay so they have uh, sent this uh, very confidential document to us but uh, you know from my end i have tried but our institute head he has not tried at otherwise that was a project of around 500 crore so it is an excellent project we initiated but I, this was also killed midway yeah but so this, they, uh, yeah and then please, then please. sir uh, in nstl they have started uh, this kind of project high endurance av so which is uh, for 10 days of operation so uh, i am in that review committee and uh, dr srinivasan is the director of nstl so they have uh, told us to develop a homing and docking system the proposal is almost in final stage we will be sending to them and uh, niot they are also looking for two projects uh, from cmri we have submitted the proposal and uh, they are uh, looking for the approval from the mois so that is under deep deep uh, ocean mission Excellent. Very good. Very nice. Sir, well, sir, this is very is from our source. Yes, sir. This is Ochudia. Yes, Ochudia, please. I have heard uh, luminaries uh, like Professor Bishar, Amitabh Ghosh, and yes, Professor Mullik. So uh, I, they are luminaries to me. I have got nothing to add. But I am amazed, sir. We always hear that the original work is done in foreign country. and we are copying and this and this but here we are having some original work we are getting report from a original work so that is a great great uh, happiness it brings to my mind sir so i must thank professor uh, dr shambunath uh, nandi uh, for this kind of original work and reporting or and this is the real life uh, work um, he is working in real life we all do theoretical work and pay some paper get credit for papers and this is this is real practical work with practical um, um, review and practical um, operations 
one thing comes to my mind, I lend with this last statement. The biggest uh, problem for us that uh, the radio, uh, the, the, uh, the magnetic uh, uh, waves, they work in the atmosphere. They don't work in the water. Yes, sir. So communication in the water is the biggest challenge. That so is the biggest I, I, We are waiting. We are waiting other than this uh, ac acoustics is a very Acoustic. limited, limited field. We are waiting some form of uh, new design. I, I was hoping really honestly, like electromagnetic in air, something new in the water, which will make range of communication very long and a continuous communication. So we'll be waiting for that kind of discovery or invention, all this. But whatever, sir, I must give thanks to Dr. Shomunad Nundi from my heart, hearing original work and original uh, demonstrations. Thank you, once again. Uh, thank you, sir, for your uh, very, uh, you know, praiseworthy words. So, but this is, uh, you know, due to, you know, blessing from Professor Vishwas and Dr. Shom and of course, uh, Professor Ghosh, Professor Mullik, who was associated with CMARI. And uh, I have grown with that environment. So, so thank you so much. Yeah, it's the big word. Hopefully, uh, Jong, Dr. Jhankar was is here, no? Yeah, I heard him because I, I happen to be from CMERI. So I, I am aware, aware of Jong, Dr. Jhankar was. Achha, okay. But uh, I don't know his whereabouts now. I may have to look for him. I could look for him in CMERI community. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, I can get the number. No, I thought uh, because uh, some of the face seems that uh, Dr. Jhankar was is here. That's why I uttered that name. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. Then I could go uh, get him. <laughs> or at least I could try to get him. I'm sorry yeah. for that. Chudda, I mean, I would uh, like to, you know, make use of this opportunity. Amit Oda is also here. See, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this, uh, you know, really almost unbelievable development in CMERI. This has really not been, uh, I would say, appreciated to that extent from any parlance, whether from CSIR or from DRDO or, you know, uh, I don't know why it's very unfortunate. Professor Bishal, uh, this is my country. This fate, we are, we are, we are, we have this fate in our country. Well, that no, is no, something we have. Uh, to Achudha, I mean, I would say that uh, you know, uh, very unfortunate. NIO Goa, they, of course, developed the first AUV, but which is probably you know just a proof of the concept, nothing beyond that. Now, whenever, see, when I was director of CMERI, I used to champion this, you know, AUV, uh, so to say, development and AUV related things everywhere. But I saw wherever I have gone, including DRDO headquarters, that, you know, they always first refer to NIO. And when, when NIO says that we have not been able to do or we have not, we failed. Even, you know, Dr. Bhujanga Rao, who was former uh, director of uh, NSTL, you know, uh, he also, in one or two forum, he admitted that only CMERI has developed such sonar or only CMERI has captured such photographs. Then people, you know, looked at us. I mean, looked at, no, I'm not in CMR right now anyway. I looked at CMR. So uh, that is, uh, I don't know, maybe wherever we are connected uh, with the ministry or other forum, we should really propagate this message or, you know. Professor uh, Bishas, specific. I can only say that this is the fate, this is the thing for which 50 to 60 percent of your students leave this country. After learning in this country, they leave this country to go and forage somewhere else. That is the unfortunate. <clears throat> and we lose the uh, the the uh, brilliant students and their research work. We lose. Yeah, uh, may I talk one point? Sir, so this work also received, uh, I mean, international recognition. 
as i understand no, uh, dr ba, da, uh, dr prasad ghosh it, it received international recognition because we communicated mit used to run uh, this uh, technology review they contacted they got some information and uh, you know we communicated then you know in one of this uh, i mean why mm. i am meets uh, young investigator meets i presented this work in mm. electrical department of mit it was a special invitation our didin uh, dg csr professor shomil bomachari uh, you know supported four five projects this was one of them but you know this is just a presentation and people came to know it is, is okay but the way it should have been admired the way it should have been supported that has not happened you know uh, yes I, i don't know why but uh, you know uh, uh, achudha is saying that uh, yes, this right. is how i do not say you know i agree with achudha but you know some organizations like nio they get huge visibility for whatever little they did in uh, AUV, but Samira's work in AUV is, you know, much much better, much much uh, uh, wider, and uh, what to say? But uh, probably the team needs also little revamping. Yes. Quite a few uh, scientists. Uh, I should not take credit that way. Uh, we got from. it is rookie etc etc but they they have also left shika ambasta left na no? yes sir so, she is at headquarters yeah so all these things happened you know the mm-hmm. whole team of you know the 15 member team it was a invincible team in um, yeah. uh, uh, fantastic Marketing. team i should say i should not use other words but the team yeah. is uh, damaged now i mean uh, broken and uh, Even Shombu was transferred to other departments. I think he has yes. come back now. Very no, recently. not yet. I am. I am working from here only. But uh, the team members who are associated, as well as some new members, I have included. So and working from there. Actually, this Navy project there is a brief history. So there was a consortium to investigate what kind of underwater technology that was developed in india uh, till now so that, there was a meeting held during last november so that consortium was from drdo as well as nias national institute of advanced studies that isc bangalore campus so professor pulok probably he, he was uh, one of the uh, advisor in that committee then the stakeholders of underwater robotics community they have presented i have also presented on cmri behalf and then from there the navy project has been initiated okay so they uh, navy they are also present in that and uh, then some discussion took place and this is a completely a theoretical work what will be carrying out by uh, by another 8 months 2 months over and then for your they, present team we can only we can we can wish the best for your team yes, your we wish best and then future endeavors that's point okay. hopefully you. things will be moving in a better better yes, way yes. Be getting more funds to carry on because they yeah, are in the sheer volume of work and uh, you know different subsistence it's really enormous and on yes. every front unless you have a dedicated team you cannot really have the integrated thing coming I mean, yeah, yeah, you are all find right. success. Right. Any, anyway, if we do not have more queries, yeah. perhaps uh, we can. Uh, I had a small up. one, very small one. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, mm, mm, the very first of the please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, uh, Dr. Nandi, first, yes, sir. congratulations for this excellent work in spite of the uh, obstacles which have been uh, talked in length. So, congratulations to you. I have a very simple question, and rather it is a I put a clarification. Uh, say at uh, 150 meter, and you are in that long mode mode. What is yeah. the average speed in which the vehicle moves, or maybe the higher speed? Hmm? Yeah. I so maximum. Get my question. Hmm. Yes, yes. So maximum speed of the vehicle, uh, envisage speed of the vehicle is around four knots. Okay, that is two meter per four second. Knots. 
Okay. Yeah. And average speed, you can say around one meter per second. That is two knots. So it is a slow moving vehicle. Yes, one meter per moving. second. No, it is not very slow. Hmm. Uh, one meter per second. So it is 3.6 kilometer per hour. Uh, it is not very slow anyway. And just my second question is, uh, you are talking about for the maneuvering the vehicle, you make use of five thrusters. Yes. Also, you have shown afterwards that two of the thrusters, they can be uh, uh, eliminated Remote. by use of uh, what you call a radar or what you call that? Yeah, control surface. Yes. Yeah, a control surface, correct. Uh, now, uh, which one is the train? And I uh, mean, what uh, is going to be the, when you go for a higher uh, Normally, uh, dates and all that? Yeah, yeah, basically, first thing is, the power requirement okay so yeah. normally these are the autonomous vehicle we need to judiciously uh, look for the power requirement so yeah. faster consumes more power compared to the radar or control surface but yeah. one restriction is that whenever you you are operating a vehicle with all propellers in that case you can take spot rotation also okay spot rotation rotation is also possible but okay yeah, with yeah, the yeah. radar the vehicle will have a uh, vehicle should have a minimum turning radius beyond that yeah. you cannot achieve so that restriction is there but uh, we go for this uh, control surface and thruster combination and we found that battery requirement it also substantially reduce almost 20 percent and mm -hmm. vehicle size is also reduced uh -huh. okay okay thank you thank you yeah. for the clarification Okay, thank you. Sir. For underwater systems, also you are mentioning use of altimeter in your set of instrumentation. Mm -hmm. For aerial system, we understand altimeter also works on the principle of pressure only. Yes. Based on pressure uh, reduction, they get the altitude. Fine. So, uh, so how do how do you calibrate altimeter for this uh, underwater system? Yeah, yeah. So, see, Is normally, it... normally the altimeters uh, or depth sensor, these are not a uh, problem or this kind of sensor doesn't need any calibration because these are very highly accurate. Okay. Particularly calibrations are required for the inertial sensors like gyroscopes, which noise propagation, uh, you know, it propagates at a very faster rate or accelerometers. Okay. So these kind of sensors are subjected to various noises like bias, scale factor, as well as velocity random work, angular random work. Okay, so that's why you need to look for, uh, you know, static uh, reading as well as uh, the, you know, uh, stochastic, uh, whether there is any random noise associated with that kind of sensor, that also we need to look into. And then we need to fit a proper model to eliminate that kind of noise. But for accelerometer, sorry, for altimeter and depth sensors, these sensors are fairly accurate. Hmm. But uh, this altimeter means it, uh, I mean, it is not altimeter. Really... Altimeter means from the vehicle to the, to the depth of the uh, uh, ocean. So it's basically similar to depth sensor only. I mean, it's not really. Uh, no, the, if you, if you, uh, you know, suppose when the vehicle is at the surface, the depth sensor reading is zero and altimeter will give you full ocean depth. When the vehicle is, uh, you know, maybe at the mid of sea, then if you add both the reading, then you will get the full ocean depth. Okay. From the sea sensor... altimeter senses only the atmospheric pressure. So that's my curio is that my why are you calling it altimeter at all? And yeah, or, or it altimeter... gives altitude, altitude with respect to sea floor. Achha, achha. It okay, provides you altitude. It provides you altitude with respect to sea floor. That's why it is altimeter. But or any water surface, water surface, water, I mean, bottom of the water surface. But once once submerged, it's not going to get its uh, air pressure. The normal so it, is, it is, it is, uh, I think uh, the principle of operation is different. It is not working. Yeah, with water I think it pressure. is different, or maybe water yes. pressure or something. Yes, there are might it be some water It might be water pressure because I mean, that's why. So they are using the same name. Yeah. Uh, yes. Doctor, Dr. Nundi, uh, this yes, is uh, Sham Ganguly. I'm 68 mechanical. Okay, uh, sir. Nice to meet you. Simple meeting. question yes, for you. Yeah, I yeah. got a question. Simple question for you. Uh, yeah. Your buoyancy is slightly positive, right? Yes. I was yes. saw that very little positive. So, 
Under normal operating conditions, when the vessel is moving underwater horizontally, mm -hmm. uh, the slight increase in buoyancy is trying to pull the vessel up. Yeah. Right. So yeah. what is maintaining its position with respect to the sea surface vertically? Is that a vertical propeller working or? I yeah, that's it. Word, yeah. Yes, sir, that, that's a good question. So uh, that's why uh, I need to look into for what kind of application I am designing the vehicle. Okay. So if, if my vehicle is uh, required to perform, suppose seabed survey, in that case, the vehicle should be always, it should always remain in horizontal position. So in that case, the height from the seabed to, uh, should be maintained in a perfect way. So in that case, we are using vertical propellers, vertical propellers to maintain the height at a particular range. And so, also, also we need to uh, have control over the role. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. No, I, I, my, my next question is if the vertical propeller has to run, isn't that being a continuous drag on the battery, reducing the operating life of the machine before yes, yes, of recharging? Course. It does. Of course. Okay. Yes. So can that problem be solved by maintaining zero buoyancy under water when necessary? Yeah, yeah. So that's why nowadays uh, uh, people are looking for buoyancy engine, okay, variable buoyancy engine. So whenever the vehicle is going down to reduce the pressure on the uh, uh, battery. So uh, intentionally we are putting more uh, weight. Okay, so that means uh, buoyancy is reducing and it will go uh, at a very faster uh, time uh, to the required depth. And before uh, reaching to that depth, again the action needs to be taken so that it again takes some water uh, it's again release some water so that it will ha add some buoyancy in it. Okay. Okay. So Actually, in that way, in that way, that kind of ballast management system we need to design to achieve that kind of, uh, I mean, objective. Okay. I, 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 Sam, I will like to add one thing here. I am with you here. That is, if you make it zero buoyancy, then the con you lose some control on the machine. If yes. I am not correct, I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. So okay. that's why. It, Always yeah. it should have near, it is called near neutral buoyancy. Yeah, not, near, near not neutral exactly. buoyancy. But the buoyancy difference is very little. My last question, and I yes, will sir. stop with this one. I have worked a long time on semi submersible oil rigs, never on a uh, type of vehicle that you are designing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I see that you are maintaining a center of buoyancy above the center of gravity, yes, which is what all floating vehicles do and that's called metacentric height. Yes. Does that height change as you operate the vehicle during operation? And in that case, how do you control the metacentric height? No, in, in our case, uh, will we that, are... Will that change at all? Now, if, Say that again? If, yes, sir. There is a possibility that when the vehicle will be associated with some, you know, intervention device, like manipulator, or Suppose that that AV needs to go and uh, it, it will be cleaning the sleeve valve with the help of a manipulator. Okay. So in that case, there will be some change of, uh, you know, say CG as well as there might be some change of CB. Okay. CG point will be changed and CB also there is a possibility depending on, uh, depending on, uh, I mean, uh, type of configuration. Yes. It will change a little. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You have done an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, then, uh, on behalf of the department and on behalf of the Centenary Celebration Committee, let me thank Dr. Nondi for this wonderful talk, wonderful presentation. We had a, I mean, very live. Thank you. Um, uh, Professor Ghosh, Professor Vishas, everybody, Achyuddha is also there. A lot of senior members of alumni are also present. It's a wonderful discussion we have. Uh, I must also take this opportunity to thank today's chair, Professor Bhoumik, who had to leave for 
to keep another appointment. Um, I have another responsibility, just a nice responsibility to hand over a memento and a certificate. In fact, I cannot really hand over right now, but this is the digital copy of the certificate will be sending to uh, Dr. Nondi by email, and we do have hard copy of this and a memento, which we'll plan to hand over to Dr. Nondi sometime later, or I will arrange to send it to his place at CMRI. Please accept this token of uh, appreciation from the department and from the celebration committee. Thank you very much. And thanks to one and all who are present here, the scholars as well, and my colleagues in the department. Thank you, everybody. So with that, perhaps we can now uh, probably close the okay. system. We can stop yeah. recording. Shantanu, yeah. please.